Hi, Toy Tractor Times fans. I'm at the 2020 St. Louis Farm Toy Show. I'm here with Tim Holker, who is famous for starting the 164th Farming Operations on Facebook. Really great group, a lot of people involved in it, and just awesome stuff all the time. And we've also got uh, Dave Westbrook, who is a big Oliver and White Farm Equipment fan, and we're going to be talking about some Agco brand equipment uh, that these guys brought up to the show, and uh, we'll start out taking a look at some almost kind of getting to be vintage Agco combines are getting to that 20 year range uh, so pretty cool stuff though because I, I always like variations and I like Agco equipment so we'll take a look at uh, Tim your family actually farms with the 670 Challenger combine Correct. and this was the first generation of, once Challenger was acquired by Agco was that the first generation combine they had yep yeah. so tell me about this machine so this one here is it was a rainy day design back home when I had a little time there, but uh, the newest features on stuff that I've designed was I got a lateral tilt on this one, and it it functions pretty good. The heads are too heavy, so it likes to sag to the ground. But and the next one is this ladder. It, it uh, it's got an L track in there, so it actually will swing out away from the tire. Otherwise, it would hit if it was on a single pin. Okay. And the real one works that way yep, as well? it's identical. And then the, the straw chopper, forward is to chop, and then back is to put a wind roll. Wow, I've never seen someone do that. That's awesome. So, that's, the, that's the cool features of it anyway. So. And the auger swings out? And yep. And I got the feeder house to hook on the head, pretty much identical to the real, okay. the real machine as well. And like I said, this thing, will, it'll fall to the ground because it'll weigh to the head. And all these, on the real machines, all these uh, headers are interchangeable. I, I film at a farm that runs gleaner combines, but they've got a Challenger corn head on one, and uh, when they're cutting beans, one of the draper heads is a Massey. Yep, so all they have to do, like if they switch to a, an offset gleaner, like an mm -hmm. R series, it it's the same hooks, it's just this pin is over that way. Okay. And it's the, the edge is the same on the right side. And then they put a plate there obviously to cover that up so don't run out on the ground because it's a 40 inch throat on a cleaner and 50 on the channel okay. and then two over here. So neat things to know for sure. So we've got the uh, Challenger 670 here and uh, Dave you've uh, built the Gleaner and the Massey Ferguson versions. Yep. And yep. They're, they're actually all inspired by Massey Ferguson, which came from the white farm uh, equipment design. Yeah, from the white, white rotary, yep. Right. All right, so uh, right. let's take a look at this gleaner here. This is a A65? Yeah, it's an A65. Um, has a 25 foot bean head on it. Still gotta get a corn head built. But yeah, it auger swings out, steers. The ladder does pivot. There it goes. Like on the real one, that it, uh, it's all out of styrene. Cab is from the Ertl. Oh, the A886. A86 that they did. And so are the ends of the headers. They used the ends okay. of the headers from the Ertl. That's a good idea. To get the right shape and design on them. And we can see they're a little bit different. Um, if we look at the Challenger, just a little rounded in the back. And then uh, the smaller, the A65 was square, and then the, a, the, yeah, the A85 the was kind of big and round. Yep, yeah, the 85 had been more rounded like the Challenger is, and these had more... These are a little easier to do to scratch build a styrene because they're all straight lines sure. and, and angles. And, so yeah. then we've got the Massey... Which Massey Ferguson model is That's this? It's a 9690. Okay. And it's basically the same way, all scratch out styrene for the little cab. And At one time, that was a big combine. That was yeah, a really big been, Massey. Yeah. yeah. We've got the ladder back here. Ladder, yep. And the, we do have the engines in back there. It's a little tougher to tell, see the detail of the engine once they're all painted. Sure. It's kind of dark underneath there. Oh, well, it looks like you can see the filter and everything. The and filter's there and that yeah. engine, the, you know, the air line up to the, you know, in the intake for the turbo and the exhaust. And the tubes. Oh, they look good. Well, just some you know unique Agco history. We we know probably see a lot of the Masseys out there, but the Gleaners they made that for about a six year period, and then yeah. um, the Challengers, um, you know, been on the market now almost twenty years. So they're um, always enjoy seeing something different. 
So Tim, uh, you're kind of the gleaner, you're the gleaner guy when it comes to our hobby. And so why don't you tell me a little bit about some of the other things you have here. Well, so I got an L that I entered in the scratch built contest and that's that one today. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So we can see the uh, 2020 Gateway Mid-America Model Contest first place and the Toy Club here sponsors those and always appreciated. So, and obviously I got my start on an L2 with the hobby. So I just keep on getting better. I really like the the wheels and the tires and how do you get a how do you get that galvanized shiny look to these okay so let's go back to the corn head up here okay this is the old material i used to print from mm -hmm. shapeways the white strong and flexible is what it was referred to mm -hmm. so that gave a rough textured look which brought that galvanized but it it didn't have the quality so we found a new place in china called fat fox and it got smoother and then i started testing out near chrome effect paint okay and that's the hobby style the mills fleet farm one didn't work as good but you got to spray it with gloss black and then you hit it with this and it gets that really really brand new shine for galvanizing oh, it just hopefully people can see here in the camera but as i move it up and down the yeah. light it it does look just like a gleaner side and i always get agitated when people call them silver cedars or galvanized and i think they're really good combines mm -hmm. I mean, they, they do an excellent job the new ones and the classics yep so we got all the flighting in here got the rain cap on it we've got our um i always called that the wheat head with the flat bats and yep got your more soybean style head love that orange with the fingers it's nice yeah and this l if you noticed in the cab it doesn't have a steering column that goes to the floor it comes off to the side okay and the L and the M's were the only ones to do that and they they tried it and they went away from it because it took your vision away from the right side of the cab because when you're looking down that bar was right in front of you okay so that's why they went back to the floor style so one little neat piece of history for that combine that's good to know if I get to film a real one I'll be looking for it <laughs> So just the L and the L2 had that, an M2? That's it. All the original L's and the original M's. Okay. The 2's, the 77 L2, they went back to the okay. end of the floor. I'm not, I've, I have filmed an M2 and an L3, but I, I'll have to, someday I hope to get the originals. So over here, it looks like we got a harvest crew. Yep, so I, I don't know, I had a, I seen a pickup one day that I really liked. It had a copper tone color to it. And I thought, let's make a couple of semis with that color. And they, I'm happy with them. They look good. Did and you paint the tarps? Or? Yep, so the tarps I took off and I sprayed them with the same color. Let them dry out and then I took them in my hand and rolled them up. Get all the flakes and loose paint off. And that helped them actually. It made them look like a tarp again. So Tim, we were taking a look at the uh, tarps and talking about how you painted them. Um, is there any other features you want to show on the, the trucks? Or? Yeah, so I was thinking one day, let's try to make some electric roll tarps. And I've got my own printer, and I can, these things print nice on there. And I was able to draw them up and print them, had them done, painted on the truck in a matter of hours, you know, letting the paint dry. But uh, I mean, you got the front one drill a hole in the middle like dead center and pop the thing in there and it lines up with the with the the bar sure and in the back one same way yeah. nice feature i that's thought that's nice yeah i'm surprised that more farms don't use those because i i do see them out there and it's hit that remote button and there's ready to hit the road so the one i'm driving now has a has a tarp the remote we don't it ain't working so i got to get out anyway but when they work they're great one thing also just taking a look at this I, I always wonder like you know you think all this grain when you're on a custom cutter crew to haul but you got to move your combine so i guess this kind of explains how it works here we got a trailer in between yep put your combine up there so the a lot of guys will take their duels off which it makes it easier for travel some don't but some of them will set them up like this with singles and that saves that trouble. sure uh, so you put that up there and then you got just leave that trailer somewhere in the field while you're hauling grain to the elevator or farm? A lot of farmers where we've been have got a nice area where you can actually pull the whole thing off the road mm -hmm. and the wherever, park everything. Sometimes yeah. you just got to unhook the trailer right on the road. 
So now what about the headers? Where do those, the pickup truck pull those when you're moving? Or? Pickup truck and then different, uh, however many you got. And then the next okay. day will probably pull your camper or whatever you're staying in. Sure. So. Well, someday I'd like to go out and see one of those harvest crews. Yeah, it's pretty neat stuff. They're a lot of fun. You got the combine, got the bin extension down, and yep. So this this S ninety eight that I have on here has got some new features to make it a custom. So like the Challenger, I made a feeder house for this. It's got lateral tilt, and the heads hooked up to it pretty nice actually. And then uh, I cleaned out what originally came for it with a grain tank, hollowed it out. And I kept the old extension for the open for, for in the field. And that just sets on there. And if you That's wanna... a great idea because when I film real machines, I always like that right at the end when they're moving down the road, that fold up action. And yeah. That looks good. So and then I got that. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Painted this silver because that is silver on them and not black. Uh, One of my favorite things is the uh, unloading auger with the, the red. Edco red on it. Yeah, deflector so it don't shoot too far, anywho. Sure. And you can see it when it's going down the road. So and there's a myth about these. It's, there's a lot of guys that don't like this auger because you can't get too tall enough to clear a cart. Well, they clear, but this spout, you see how long it is, and it actually shoots grain out further. Right. Further than the old ones would have, where it would more drop it straight down so you can. You can actually line the edge of the cart up right here versus here. That way, and, it and you're also it not have to. I had a friend with a John Deere, like S790 this fall. That that cart hit a bump and bam. Yeah, that's a bad deal. Bending up your auger. We did so. that with the Challenger one time. We didn't wreck it, but it it scared us anyway. But not bad to throw it a little ways and right. get up so close. And another thing too is, when you're done, you can actually fold the auger in while you're by the cart because it goes up instead of down right and at one time almost every single combine on the market whatever brand it was had that pivot style mm -hmm. and it looks like uh, another kind of gleaner here or? yep so here's an r72 and this i took an s88 spec cast one and actually the cab on the challenger combine is what came off of there so i was able to utilize the whole combine okay. when i took it apart uh, and this has got my feeder house on it as well so, and if, yeah, obviously the cab, that's 3D printed clear glass. It's clear resin. Very nice. Also from Fat Fox. So the floor and the roof. And that's got the clean grain tank too. And uh, the reason it ain't got a auger in there is because I put it on my printer that I have personally. And it ain't very well. It doesn't do very well at overhanging objects. So that's why that's not in there. Uh, the engine compartment on an S88 would look like this one. Okay. So I had to pop that off because the 72s didn't have that, obviously. So replace that. So you don't have to pile it down or anything? No, it just, just has the right angle? And yep. Yeah, I was it. able to make that fit pretty good, actually. This thing here, if you ever do one, there's three pieces that riveted that plastic piece on it. You got to file out of there. Okay. But that, it ain't too hard to do. No, it's, so. it's great to be able to go back and create a classic like that using the the casting. Yeah. And then, yeah. Last but not least, I found made me a header trailer for hauling these around. That's looking good. Thank you. So, are we going to see a custom harvesting crew display with these nice cleaners? Or? We may. I've got some big plans for them. Their 100th anniversary is coming up in 2023, so uh, there's a few guys that know my plan, and I ain't revealing it on a video because it's going to be a surprise. Well, it'll, it'll be, be great. Uh, Gleaner was the first manufacturer to build a self-propelled combine, and 100 years of production is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you'll be celebrating in style. It'll be great yep. to see. I'm going to have fun with it, that's for sure. Tim and... Dave, thank you for sharing this uh, here at the show, and it's always great to see what you guys are building, and we'll look forward to seeing what comes up next. Thanks for checking out Toy Tractor Times YouTube. If you would like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to the channel, where there is over hundreds of different videos on 
customs and displays, and you can also join in the discussion at ToyTrackerTimes.com. Toy Talk, where people share building ideas on displays and customs. As always, thanks for watching.